Yes, we are back once again. It is the Pencil World Sneaker Championship powered by Foot Locker. Thanks for tuning in as you do or have been. Thank you to first and foremost to all the people that have been voting. All of you out there that have cast your votes and made sure you let your voices be heard. We appreciate that. My name is Dee Wells, along with all this distinguished guests and more importantly, the selectors this evening. We have a great show in store for you. This is the top 16, and we're not playing any games. So let's get this thing rolling. But in the meantime, stay tuned. Make sure you watch the show because you get the inside scoop to what's going on with these designs, the competitors, what makes them unique and stand out. But let me get to my, my soul brother number one, the man himself. He's known as Dr. Paper Chaser. Welcome to the show, sir. Welcome. Welcome. What's good, sneaker lovers, future footwear professionals around the world, mm. collectors, panel sponsors, everybody. Welcome to the top 16 for the World Sneaker Championships. It's been a really rough, crazy, invigorating, creative ride so far. We've had a couple of hundred thousand votes cast for what we're going to broadcast tonight, which is the folks who made it to the top 16. So we hope people are sitting down, buckled up, and ready for a crazy ride as we announce the World Sneaker Championships top 16. And before we get into that, we got to turn it over to one brother who is, uh, he's a footwear designer by trade, but he is indeed the architect, if you will, <laughs> of the World Sneaker Championships. And that is Pen Soul founder, Mr. Dwayne. How are you guys doing tonight? It was good, man. Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, first of all, I'm a retired footwear designer. Come um, on. So the, the pencil lead has been broken. I might I might resharpen it a little bit later on this year, but I'm not sure yet. But <laughs> right now I'm retired. Um, but um, yeah, man, we we are back. This is the third week, um, ready to do some great things, show some great work. Um, I, I definitely want to first and foremost thank you, Sean and Dee, for uh, pulling this together and making it happen for us. Um, also to all of our guest selectors, which you'll meet shortly. Um, you know, I, I remember. I don't know if you guys remember on the first broadcast we did three weeks ago. Um, you know, I, I made the proclamation that some person in this tournament would get a job. Yep. And you are three weeks in. Three weeks in, and I've had four different kids contact me about they've been contacted about getting a job. Mm. We got three weeks in to that happening. And so that's that's kind of amazing. And if we're three weeks in and we had four, I'm sure it's gonna be more um, as we finish this tournament, definitely for sure. So um, I don't want to take up too much time. Let's jump right in, um, and let's let's meet our guest selectors. That's been gracious enough to to bless us with their time on Sunday evening, on an Easter Sunday evening. Yeah. I greatly appreciate that. Um, so let's dive right in and meet our first guest selector. Our first guest selector. There's a phrase that circulates in sneaker culture as started by female sneaker fiends where they say, don't sleep on the ladies. Yeah. And when I usually hear that phrase, this is one of the first women who I think of who has always been very knowledgeable, has a passion for the shoes, has established a tremendous following through some really in-depth videos on YouTube, Word. and really worked with me on a very monumental panel called Soul Sister Revolution as part of the Rise of Sneaker Culture exhibition that passed in New York this past summer. So I had to, I had to make sure that my dear female homie, Soul DeVita, came to join us for the World Sneaker Champion. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm so happy to be here tonight, even if it is Easter Sunday. I mean, I'm <laughs> to wait, all right? It's, it's all about that, these designs that we're going to talk about tonight. Absolutely. Well, thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us. Selector, selector. Man. Well, next up, 
you know, this man, some people say, you know, he needs no introduction, but I'll I'll do my best. You know, I'll do my best. I mean, somebody, he, he may just say, well, I just make videos and I put them on YouTube. Or I do a show called This Week in Sneaks. Or I happen to interview some somewhat famous NBA players. I don't know. But nonetheless, he knows the soul and then some... Let's welcome to the show. Let's welcome to the select a cheer, Mr. Jock Slade. You, you are really too kind. Uh, really, really happy to be here. Um, some some great people on the panel. Obviously, Dwayne, Sean, D. You guys are obviously legendary in the sneak world. So I'm just happy to be a part of it, and I'm really really ready to get to some of these designs because these kids are like crazy talented, and like I can't wait. I can't wait to get my picks off. There you go. <laughs> All right, so let me introduce the uh, third selector. Um, so one of, one of the things when I teach is I talk to the students about not only just design, not only just about how they should ha act and behave, but just getting them to, A, understand that they're a brand, but more importantly that this business that they're trying to get into, it is just that, a business. It, it's 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 sometimes a good business, sometimes it's bad, but most, most, most of all what the kids have to understand is what they create is there's a reason for it. It's not going to be just because they like it. Um, it's going to be based on what the company needs and wants. And so the first thing that I always tell them that this is a sneaker business. And one of the things that I want to do with, with this World Sneaker Championship is bring in, you know, who I, who I consider you know, one of the more influential people in sneakers that people probably don't know too much about because he hangs out in the Northwest with me. <laughs> um, so we don't we don't get much publicity in the Northwest. For some reason, the media just doesn't go that far west. It stops in California for some crazy reason. But um, but Mr. Mr. Matthew Kish is definitely one of the people that you should, if you don't know him, you should follow him. Um, because he is extremely knowledgeable about our industry and he speaks on it through the lens of not only someone who's passionate about sneakers, but someone who has an eye on business and the business of the culture itself. So, Mr. Matthew Kish, thank you very much for being here with us. Thanks. You're, you're very brave to have a business reporter at a design event, so I admire your courage as always. <laughs> Just really... Uh, Happy to be a part of this. Like Jacques said, it's really an amazing group of talents that you have here. Uh, and it's just really inspiring me to see the work done by Pencil students. And it is going to be really hard to select this round. I thought last week was tough, but this week's uh, even more so. So I'm really excited to get after it. Nice. Thank you very much. Nice. So our fourth and final selector knows a thing or two about the mountaintop of World Sneaker Championships. He's also really lethal with that pencil and a blank piece of paper and anything else that he has as tools of his trade. But he's also been one of the folks who has been doing a great job as a sole elector for this current 2016 World Sneaker Championships. So let's hear it for the homie Stefan Cristobal. What's up, homie? <laughs> <laughs> I, was trying to spare, I was trying to spare you the pain of leaving that part out. Right. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. I, I wanted to get it out in the open early, you know, maybe. Uh, yeah, but, um, you know, thanks for having me back. Um, it's crazy. It's been two years since I last won, and it's, it's cool to know that, like, someone watching right now is in the same boat that I was, and, like, I know how you guys feel, and, like, there's a lot of butterflies, and I'm super excited to see who's up next, so. This is going to be good this week. Very tough, but good. Absolutely. Well, we had a lot of a lot of people voting, D, and and I want you before we get into the selection, as we're going to this uh, top sixteen. There were a lot of people voting. I mean, we're talking about over, you know, to the tune of uh, fifty thousand votes. Correct me if I'm wrong, D. Yeah. yeah. And. The numbers keep pouring in, and and the emails keep pouring in, and um, it, it's only going to get better. And just like you said earlier, and all of our selectors said as well, someone's life 
has already changed, and someone's life will change even more. So, yep. um, you know, we gave you know each of our guests, you know, selectors, you know, some designs to you know to pick from. They're going to reveal them, and you know, as as you say, it's going to get. Um, I don't know if it's going to get more brutal or more you know WWE because there's a lot of smack talking in the past three weeks, but um. <laughs> Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Paper Chaser, what, what do you what do you think? Are we ready to get the show on the road? Well, I think the matchups are going to be pretty interesting this week. Um, I, I I like what I see as far as the matchups between the selectors. So, I have a high level of anticipation and curiosity about what our selectors are going to pick. Also, mm -hmm. because we have you know. Stefan is, is is OG with it already as far as this um, this year's WSC goes, but we have three other new selectors this week who can really flip things to go another way. True. So things are definitely not as predictable as anyone who's watched may have thought. It's, no. it's very interesting to see where this goes. So... With that being said, it's time for us to get into this top 16. So we're going to get and into the... Yeah, man, it's time to go? Yeah, yeah it's time to get into it. So okay. we're going to go mm. with Stefan's pick. Let's see who he goes with first. He's up first. So let's see what you got, Stefan. All right, so we're going to roll the video. Oh, here it is. Okay, cool. Yep. Or is it frozen? Is that just me? Uh, for the industrial side, I decided to use a black plastic shell, which I can pass the, the old shoes to maintain the foot. Uh, as you can see, the part of white texture so looks like it's getting out of the shell, uh, as is the plastic part uh, compressing it. Uh, so, same to this white padded part, uh, the shoes look more appealing and comfortable for the consumer. So, in globality, um, this shoes inside the curiosity. I think that people will want to try it. Uh, personally, uh, if I could try it, I think uh, I will. And so, thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope you like my design. And be my friends. All right. All right. So, Stefan, who's your All pick? Right. All right. So, if you guys have been doing your homework, everyone who's watching, um, that video is from Maxence Fournier out of France. Um, Vive la France, whatever you say. I was really, really impressed uh, with Maxon's video. Um, first of all, I think he was the only one who sketched in real time, so he wasn't afraid to show off any of his skills. Um, mm -hmm. And he really understood what he was trying to make. So if you watch that video, he's drawing how the shoe is actually interacting. It's very industrial. Um, and I really, really appreciate that he's having that sort of foresight. It's not just about a pretty picture for him. It's about how this thing functions. Because I, I, you've seen it, it's crazy. So um, this kid's got some skills, and I'm really happy that he's moving on. Yeah, yeah, this shoe has, has advanced through the experience quite a bit. So there's obviously, you know, some folks out there who really believe in that design. So next up, the next pick is um, going to go for, go to our beloved Evie, Sol DeVita. So we can play her video of who her pick is. For the stability and also the lacing system, we can have leather also here on the punta and right there on the also with this beautiful stitching detail with the post logos for pencil and walls in the championship. Then some icing for the traction pattern. And I want to make this mock up as well. It's just a quick mock up, but I think you can have a better idea of how the design is going to look. In 3D, okay. I'm gonna take more pictures of this, and I'm gonna post it later on my Instagram. So make sure you hit the links on the description below. And I would like to know what do you think about my design, guys? I know there's a lot of a lot of good competition right there, and this is gonna be tough. But I hope you love my design as much as I do, and hopefully I can get your vote. <laughs> All right, Evie. Bye. Well, you know, it's still spring break in my mind, so we head into Mexico, and uh, Quetel Ramos is my guy. I was really, really 
impressed that he called out the vegan leather. Uh, the, uh, veg excuse me, vegetable tanned leather. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's some high stability. Uh, it takes about like two months for it to get to the process of being usable. So, I mean, to me, that says a lot. Um, also, he studied with a renowned Harache sandal maker. And mm -hmm. I mean, that takes a lot of work to make those sandals by hand. So his sneaker, it, it's really true craftsmanship. I mean, like I said, from the from the leather to the design itself, um, and then his his background. He's going back to his culture of Mexico. So I got to do that. All right. All right. So let's see that matchup. Let's see what that's looking like. We got uh, Max Lens Fournier from France and Quesal Ramos from Mexico. Let's see what France versus Mexico looks like. There you go. It's a tough one. Wow. Good soccer, wow. man. Yeah. yeah Once yeah, again, soccer. about the soccer matches in uh, this year's World Sneaker, I think. Yeah, it is. Wow. Yeah, that's a nice one. Good look right there. That's a good look right there. Max yeah. Sense 48 versus Quetzal Ramos. And while Steph's guy was drawing, my guy had a mock up. So, so. That's true. <laughs> okay. All right. Great All point. Right. Thank <laughs> You, you was my pick from last week, and I wanted you were new. I wanted to help you out, so I let you take him into your bracket. Um, <laughs> so that's my initial pick, so I'll take credit for both of them. <laughs> I'm gonna let you have that. Matt. I'm gonna let you have that. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, for the hmm. third pick, we're okay. gonna we're, we're gonna let Matt introduce his third pick. So I'm going to bring it back to the U.S. with uh, Maxwell Lund from Minnesota. So this is both a performance or a lifestyle shoe. I like the colorway. I think it's very striking. Uh, the most interesting part of the shoe is the lacing system. Uh, so before you vote on this matchup, make sure you watch his video. The tongue of the shoe is actually two pieces, and the lacing system is designed to kind of pull that down over your foot. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have a really wide foot. Uh, I think this would be a more comfortable uh, way to lace a shoe maybe for a wide foot. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I really liked about his videos, he did some consumer research. So he's a college student. Uh, he talked to a lot of his friends about what colorway they would like in the shoe. He mocked up, uh, well, it looked like a hundred different shoes uh, before he decided on this one. So mm -hmm. I like that he's doing some market research and he has an eye and an ear on the consumer uh, before he put his entry in. So a really strong entry uh, from Maxwell Lund. All right. All right. Cool. So right. next up will be the pick the video first from our homie Jacques Slade. <laughs> My inspiration is from the city itself. You can tell how the flip how the flip over toes comes out from the shoe. Um, that's a little bit crossover view. The high quality calf um, used as the upper, as its uh, luxury shoe, um, some translucent um, polyurethanes on the heel counter is fresh elements that I put on the shoe. Uh, for the heel seat area, it was fulfilled with bunch and uh, FTPU piece in order to offer extra comfort and support. But the midsole is made made of uh, flexible eBay form and I like something uh, with streamlines and so that you can see uh, you can see on the sole and there, there there was some crazy surfaces going on and at the lateral view so overall that's my design for the competition so if you like my design uh, please vote for me appreciate it all right, all right. Jacques Slade, I just want to start off by giving Martin a round of applause. Apparently, he put in his work, see the type of work that he does. Uh, he said it's a luxury shoe. I think, I, I think that really struck out most of me about his design was how he really thought about each piece of the shoe. Like, he even took the time in the video to show you, you know, this is EVA, this is translucent. And he even thought on the design tip. A lot of times with sneakers, I think, a lot of people pay attention to the design, but the function isn't necessarily there, necessarily there, even though this is 
luxury shoe. He thought about every piece of that shoe and was like, this, yeah, it looks beautiful. This is why this is here. This is comfortable. This is translucent because I want people to be able to see through. I want to get the design of the city. So for him to put that sort of thought process and to put that sort of function into his luxury design, you know, luxury shoes often are just luxury shoes, but he put a lot more thought into it, and that immediately drew me to it. So Martin's my pick. Sorry, Matt. I appreciate your pick, but <laughs> Martin's the guy. Yeah, tough matchup. Let's see what that head-to-head -head looks like. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's almost a reverse color scheme, actually. Yeah. yeah. A little bit of a yin-yang color scheme, no pun intended, with China. Um, yeah. <laughs> I did. I did like his infomercial flashing parts that we highlighted as uh, yeah. parts of his. I don't, I, don't, I don't like that word infomercial. I, I like I like his, his attention to detail is how there I like to describe right. it. That's, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> All right. So we got that matchup out of the way. That's the first four picks down already. Y'all believe it or not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Jacques, you, you up next, homie, with your next pick. And who are you going to drop on us? Uh, this I'm going to drop is Russolo Danita. Now, this is um, I just love how this is a very casual style shoe, and like designers for me are amazing people. Like the way that designers think about just putting things together and how they implement them into a shoe design. So if you look at this shoe, you go, oh, it looks casual, has this like really cool lacing system, and it has like these holes. But then you realize when in his video, he talks about this design was inspired by a roly-poly. So those breaks there are designed by how the roly-poly shifts and moves his body. And he wants to mimic that movement with your foot and the way that your foot moves. And like it just blew my mind just for someone to be inspired by something like that and to turn it into such a beautiful shoe. So it only makes sense that this one advances in my bracket. I mean, it's clear. It's obvious. All right, all right, all right. Strong declaration, Matt. What you going to do about that? That was one of my favorite matchups last week. I really like both those shoes. I was curious to see which one would move on. Uh, so congratulations to Ros Rosulo. Um, so I'm going to head up to Canada, Jacques. Uh, okay. I'm going to go with James Blakely. Uh, do you want to show some of his video? What's up, everyone? It's James Blakely here, and this is my submission for the World Sneaker Championship. I designed a simple, iconic luxury sneaker with a strong sense of craftsmanship. This sneaker uses premium materials, great support, and amazing traction to make sure you're ready for any adventure. For this shoe, I was inspired by yin and yang, the balance of two elements. At Pencil, you are given an opportunity. When that opportunity is balanced with preparation, you find success. And that's what I wanted this shoe to stand for. Mm -hmm. Thank All you. Right. And thank you, Foot Locker. Nice. Good point. So, what was it about that design, Matt? That yeah, I like I like the silhouette. I just think it's kind of a timeless sort of classic design. I like that he's going for something iconic that'll have staying power on shelves. Uh, I like that muscular sort of uh, sole on the bottom and that toothy kind of traction there. I think that'd be a really nice urban shoe. I also really like his attention to the luxury uh, sort of premium uh, materials. Uh, so that's a really strong trend in the marketplace right now. People are willing to pay a little bit extra for nicer leather in a shoe. And I think that's what James is going for here. I also like that he tells a story with his shoe. So that's such a big part of the footwear industry right now, and he does that in his video. If you haven't had a chance to watch it, please do before you vote. Last thing I really like about this shoe is I think uh, it could be a wardrobe staple type shoe that people would want this in a few different color colorways. So from a commercial perspective, I think it's a really strong entry. Congratulations to James. Nice, 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 nice. nice. Yeah. So let's see that matchup. U.S. versus Canada. Mm -hmm. Nice shoes. Mm -hmm. Congrats to Rosulo Donita and Good James. Pick. Good pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Canada. Mm -hmm. As soon as this broadcast is over, make sure y'all head over. Make sure y'all head over to WorldSneakerChampionships.com. Get your vote on. Get your vote on for real. A good matchup of clean and complex. I like that. Yep. Was that Dwayne? No, so it's a good matchup of clean or complex. It just depends on what your personal style is. 
Yeah, yes, it's indeed. also like another good. That's a really good example of how to render a shoe black, but really, really yeah. well. Like, there's yeah. a lot of depth in James. Not, not to take anything away from the other rendering, but I mean, he's telling the story really good, and it's really nice. Yeah. All right. So next up, we're already at the seven pick, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Going fast. So yeah. Evie, Sol de Vida, you up next. Yeah. Let's uh, keep them passports out because we headed to India, and I'm Whoa. thinking my guy. Uh, a, a jazz, a jazz, Rashid. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he describes this as a running shoe, but more towards the lifestyle. I was really, really pulled in by the lace on the side. Uh, I, I like that fact that you use the pull tab to tighten and loosen the sneaker, as well as you could see where he's using the checkered areas, and he's using the same um, and different thicknesses of the same material. So in some places it may be thicker, some places it may be thinner. And so yeah. when, he, when, I'm, when I hear him say that, I'm thinking, oh, my foot's going to form. When, when I walk, it's going to just form to my foot. It's, and then, then the smooth bottom of the sole. Um, I think he got this one. Nice. Good density there. Good density there. Density play. Nice, nice. So, Stefan. Yes. Um, what are you trying to counter with. First of all, let me give props to Sol de Vida. Evie, that's a great pick. Uh, it was also my pick from last week. So you're you're learning from one of the best that's out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hurt yourself, Stefan. That that yeah. rotator cuff may may you know. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for this matchup, um, you know, I really liked it based off of the student's video. Um, but that person is Austin Jamaicans. So. What is really great, if you guys haven't checked out this dude's video, is he's really a proponent of showing, not telling. So he's like presenting his shoe in a way where it's very thoughtful, but it's also very concise. He's like, I've made this decision because of this, this decision because of this. And I think a lot of problems that young designers run into is they just want to make stuff look tight, right? But um, his was very thoughtful and considered, so props to him for this good shoe. <laughs> We got India versus the U.S. Let's see what that's looking like head to head. Mm. Yeah. So, Sensei Dwayne Edwards, you want to weigh in on this one? Man, you know what's 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 cool about this is it's actually two good examples of kind of a simple design. Yeah. Um, but the back gets a little bit complex. But ultimately, if you're wearing this for lifestyle purposes, all you see is the toe. In the, in, the, in, the, in the midfoot, where they took the idea of simplicity and put it in two different directions, which I think, you know, from, you know, from, from Rashid's perspective, it has more of a sporty feel to it, yeah. and then Austin went totally kind of on the lifestyle side. And even the color choices is right on point as well. Um, yeah. so I, I like it. I like both of them, actually. All right, all right, cool. So we got a video to play for the ninth pick which belongs to Stefan. Um, can we play that video first? Because y you have to hear it, I think. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Let's, let's run your pick. Hi. My name is Randy, and this is my submission for the World Sleeper Championship. To me, a lifestyle sneaker is the embodiment of the women world. It invokes an emotional response to the buyer and also attaches them to a movement. To achieve this, I combined a sleek silhouette with the most iconic designs of 2015 in pop culture today with two three tones and a multitude of textured materials. I'd like to thank Pencil and Footlocker for this opportunity. I hope you guys like it. Stefan! Yes, so... I got, I got hyped on that video. I think the music was a bit of a, a bit of a help, but uh, the shoe itself is really nice. Um, he's, you know, he's talking about like really understanding the consumer. You know, like the sense of style, really what's happening kind of in pop culture at the moment. So I think this shoe is really with the times, but it's also with this, this nice, unique twist that he's bringing to it. So I'm really happy to see this shoe move on, um, and I'm kind of excited to see what Evie's gonna go with next. But who knows? Yeah. So the ninth pick goes to Randy. Boudros Partap from Canada. Oh, <laughs> Davida. Yeah. 
I'm, co- I'm coming at Scuff hard on this one. I'm gonna bring it to his home of Canada. We're gonna um Charlotte Poon. So um I think we're gonna watch the the ladies. Yeah. This part, the tongue and the toe box would be of a breathable mesh along with a leather panel on the side uh, where you have elastics running underneath it to hold your foot in. So I decided to go with elastics instead of laces because I thought it would contribute better to the sleek and minimal look of the shoe. And this, so this white collar. Um, and not only does it have the pencil logo integrated into it, which would be an emboss eye from the back view, if you can imagine it, it would almost look like a tail shape or silhouette wrapping around the back of your shoe. So with the outsole, I wanted to link it back to the upper and continue with the whole orca whale theme. Along with that, I also wanted to include a pop color to draw a little bit of attention to the bottom of the shoe and not just have this as another typical black and white skew. So um, around the edge are kind of reminiscent of their teeth and then the middle would be down the hatchet essentially. <laughs> if my designer would like to support me in this competition, you could head on over to the link down below www.worldsneakerchampionship.com and Cast a vote for my shoot. And well, Davida. I told you, Steph, I was coming at you like a killer whale with this one. <laughs> 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 you can't be taking wow. shots at me. <laughs> yes. Well, listen, let me tell you something. I am so pleased to see a female designer make it to 16. I mean, honestly, I chose her design not even knowing, reading her name at the, at below. Um, the fact that I am a sucker for a themed sneaker, she just won me over with that as well. Um, I, I like that, you know, as a female designer, she's not coming at me with the pinks and the purples and stuff like that. She's coming at us with a unisex design. Um, <laughs> There's no lacing there, which also makes it really nice, easy to go, slip on. I'm out of out the door, and it'll match anything, black and white. We can't go no nothing wrong with that. Tough matchup. Tough matchup. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Mm. Tough matchup. Let's, yeah, let's, see let's see what this. Yeah, let's see what that looks Canada. like. This is Canada, actually. Yeah, yeah. Canada. Wow. I mean, I might also just add that was also my pick from last week. So I mean, <laughs> oh. I can't even give you that, do you? Uh. I, I think uh. because you replaced Sean, that they wanted to kind of ease you into the whole okay. thing, you know, okay. make it tougher. <laughs> no, is it, is that okay. Listen to this guy. I know, right? <laughs> I'm gonna find out where you live, okay? Oh. <laughs> Beaver's in Oregon, nine seven zero zero eight. <laughs> All right, so 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 we got to look at that match up there, Canada versus Canada. Before we move on, yeah. everybody, yeah, yeah, it's good. yeah. That is. I, like, I like that. Tough one. No, it's All great. Right. You know what I liked about Charlotte's video was that she had—I don't know if you paid attention to it—she had about thirty other versions in the background. Yeah. Um, of just how she was exploring, exploring, exploring until she got to a good place that she liked. Yeah. And I think that's something that more designers, especially aspiring designers, should, should take a look at, is yeah. explore. Don't settle on the first thing that you create, because that may not be your best idea, but you won't know that until you actually explore. So I, I would give her mad credit for actually having that much ideation in the background, which is great. Yeah. Uh, so our 11th pick belongs to the homie Jacques Slade. <laughs> yeah. Who you got? Uh, this is Arthur Wong. Uh, we had a video for him. We got our video. But you should check it out, though, for sure. He has a good video, actually. I mean, putting it on this if one. If we don't, that's okay. That's all right. All right. So, obviously, his name is Arthur Wong, which pretty lead, leads you already because he has art in his name and that's what he's creating with his shoe. It's a lifestyle sneaker. We're giving some more love to Canada. So Canada Canada's representing real strong in, in these picks today. Yeah. That's uh, three straight picks for Canada. Yeah. 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 yeah so, so Art is specifically, I'm going to start calling him Art. That's, that's what I'm calling him from now on. He's specifically from Vancouver. 
Uh, so his shoe, his lifestyle shoe, is inspired by the city of Vancouver. And you can see like at the bottom of the shoe, the outsole is really, really dope. How he like uses the urban landscape to help shape the outsole of the shoe. The upper of the shoe ha is made of industrial wool, which obviously being Vancouver, it's cold. He's thinking about his environment, which is all obviously something you should incorporate into your shoe designs. And then he's making it lifestyle, so he has these laces, but. In the video, he specifically talks about like I can, you can lace this up any way really that you want to. You can you can change the laces, you can flip it, and then he adds a little bit of his designer touch in there, and he like adds the laces and yellows because it think, makes him think of a number two pencil, which is obviously his tool of choice to create the dopest sneaker out there. So there it is, our Wong putting it all together. Wow. So Matt. You gotta have a strong counter, my man. I got a good strong counter, and and interestingly enough, it's another one that plays with uh, lacing as well. Uh, so we're gonna head over to Europe for this one to Kuba Blamel from Poland. Ooh. This shoe is fun to talk about. So it's called the Loop. Uh, so the Loop here refers to the lacing system. So instead of a traditional shoelace, it's kind of like a burlap rope, loops around the foot. Uh, it's got kind of a sock-like upper. Uh, looks like a really comfortable shoe. Uh, Kuba is a climber, and it's kind of you can see it's got that mountaineering aesthetic to it with the rope and the natural color tones. Uh, watch his video as well before you vote on this one. Another thing I like about it that you can't see here is the traction pattern on the bottom. Uh, he called it something that'd be good for the urban nomad. So as someone who lives in a rainy city, I would love to have a pair of these shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Two other things I would note about it, you know, we hear a lot from stock analysts, Wall Street analysts about how consumers want experiences, not things. This is kind of right in line with that trend. It's the sort of shoe that would inspire you to maybe get outside and take a hike or be more active. Other thing I really like about it is I think it would merchandise well. Uh, I had look at the sneaker wall at the mall and there's a lot of sameness. I think this would stand out. I think you could build a retail display around that shoe to really catch people's eyes, force them to pick it up. Roll it around, hopefully take a pair home. So uh, congrats to Cuba. Nice. So we have a video for your next pick, Matt, for your thirteenth pick. So well let's I want to see this matched up. Oh, okay, yes, yes. Heads up, yes, heads up matchup. Sorry about that. Heads up. Let's see what we're looking at there. Wow. Poland versus Canada. Poland Canada. Poland match is I like it. Tough vote. Tough vote. So congrats to Artur Rona and Cuba. Blamel, you made it to the round of 16. So, again, we got a video to play for your 13th pick, Matt. So we're going to run that. Also comfortable enough and stylish enough that they can wear it all the time. The crosswalk is made from high-quality leather, so it fits in perfectly in the corporate environment. The overall silhouette is a combination of a classic dress shoe and a running shoe. Though it's got an overall athletic look, a lot of the details are derived from classic luxury dress shoes. Uh, from the side, you can see the emphasis on the arch, the layers of leather in the heel, and the whole pattern on the toe. Black upper and midsole make it look like a classic dress shoe when it's warm with slacks, where the red accents and outsole and gray ankle area give it a definitively athletic look. Since I have a background with leather, I always try to pay special attention to the details um, things like stitching and construction methods and accents. You can see these sort of details in the tab on the midsole that says pencil, uh, the patch on the tongue that has the globe logo, the heel loop that kind of comes through the layers of leather on the heel, and then there's another kind of hidden globe logo on the very back end of the rubber outsole. The crosswalk embodies a very modern design with a decidedly vintage flair. Right. I hope I get your vote. Right. So well. who exactly is that as your 13th pick, Matt? All right, Jacques, here, here's what I got for you. I got uh, Austin Scott from the U.S. <laughs> He's an industrial designer with about 10 years of experience working with leather, and you can see that in this shoe because he, again, features premium leather uh, and craftsmanship. Again, that's in line with the trend that consumers want. Uh, it's a hybrid shoe. It could be wor worn with slacks at the office. We'd kind of cover up that collar on the top. Uh, you could also wear this as a more athletic shoe. Uh, I like the dimpling on the toe. Kind of nice dressy touch there. 
Uh, I also really like about Austin's entry is that he's shown the ability to come up with a concept, execute on the concept, and tell a story. Uh, so I think the name Crosswalk is a great name for a product that's got kind of dual use. Uh, I think he's got a really bright future in the industry, and congrats on making it to the round of 16. Word up. Word up. Wow. So I think we already know it's the homie Jacques Slay turn. So yeah, yeah. Let's see what you're presenting, sir. It's your last pick of the evening, sir. You got yeah. to the evening. It's my last pick. I'm ready. I'm ready to do it. We're gonna play. We're gonna play this video. Yep. Let's yep. get it. That pencil logo to get in the shoe quite easy. And this elastic piece right here, underneath that one, you can hide the lace notes if you wish. And the upper of this shoe is mainly made of suede, and you got this uh, rubber cage which uh, holds the hidden lace. The rubber cage also uh, has the World League Championship logo details. Uh, the shoe also contains some stitches for stitching details, just to give it a more like handicraft feel. And uh, on the inside of the shoe, you get this knitted fabric that kind of wraps around the foot itself. And you can you can actually spot that knitted fabric underneath the shoe at the outsole. So you get this cool Bornholm pattern going on. And here you can see the knitted fabric I was talking about. And since the shoe is quite uh, geometric, geometric and hard, I wanted to spice it up with its organic pattern and also make it more like interesting at the bottom. So uh, to sum it up, you can say this shoe has a quite fast appearance and it's made for, you know, a fashion, fashionable person that's always on the go. So thank you. <laughs> Shout out to you. Shout out to Ruben. Ruben squad. So he Ruben. gets up and walks away like he drops the mic. Like he just yeah. <laughs> Ruben squad. Ruben's like squad. Squad. Let's roll. So shout out, shout out to Ruben, to Ruben Erickson. He is from Sweden, and obviously you saw, you guys just saw his design. So the thing that struck me most about his design, uh, when I, again, when I think about designers, I think about how they they make the lines, and for him, it was all about geometric shapes and. You know, I think subconsciously, when we see certain shoes, it's a lot of it is based on the shape, and I think he took a lot of that into consideration. And then I think he also took his background. He's from Scandinavia. He has this organic print on the outsole. I don't know if you guys noticed that outsole. If you look at it, it has like this really organic. It almost looks like cells on the outsole, and I just thought that was really, really dope. And then the details. He goes from suede to rubber for the laces. He even thought thinks about having an elastic panel at the top to hide the laces so you don't see the shoelaces. You don't see them tied up and they're hanging off your shoes. You can hide them behind there. And then the final detail is being able to see almost the inside of the shoe from beneath. I know you don't necessarily see that all the time, but the fact that he thought about that, like this is an additional detail I'm going to add to this design, just a little something extra to show you, you know, the people that are fashionable and that are wearing this to give them a little something extra to show off when they show, oh, this is what I'm rocking today. Like he said, fashionable, that's always on the move. The shoe looks fast. It's something you're going to look for. I mean, what else can you say about Ruben? He's doing it. Nice pick. Nice pick. Nice pick, yes indeed. All right, so that was a pretty serious matchup right there for our thirteenth and fourteenth pick. Let's see yeah. head to head yeah. for that. Yeah, I feel like I should have used more consumer buzzwords. I think Matt was hitting me with like consumer <laughs> insight. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I don't have. Well, I don't have. You have any... a business reporter at the table. You're <laughs> yeah. the stock out of him. I don't have any. I don't have any buzzwords to describe <laughs> Ruben, Ruben besides well done details and geometric. <laughs> <laughs> So we got the USA versus Sweden on the 13th and 14th pick. Wow. And that's a pretty tough one to see one of them go away, man. That's, that's going to be hard. Yeah, those are some heavy hitters. Uh, before, we go any, before we go anywhere, can everyone just look at this really quickly? <laughs> uh, in, case you didn't, in case you don't see that, that's straight out of Scandinavia, Ruben yeah. Eric. <laughs> if that doesn't get your vote, I don't know what does. Right. Man, it's about it. It's about it. I'm about it. Trying to redo crisscross? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. All right. All right, so congratulations right. to them. Final two picks. Final two. Sol De Vida, your final pick of the night, dear. It was a great trip around the world, but I got to bring it back home to USA. Um, I got a Curtis 
well, messing up with my notes here. <laughs> I got Curtis Hoffman. Hoffman. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Curtis Hoffman. I was immediately drawn to this sneaker because of the hiking. Uh, could, there's nothing out there in the consumer world for hiking. And while I don't have a lot of places that I can go hike, I can use these for the snow. Mm -hmm. um, the sole, which you do not see here, it looks like a bunch of little pyramids. Um, the upper is all waterproof, and I love the touch of leather, which he is going to use tumbled leather on the, the upper heel. Um, I'm really, really impressed with this design, and I would hope that it comes out in a size 6 if it ever comes to life. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. and let me put this on record before Steph says he chose this. I think he key logged my computer and seen everyone that I was oh. voting. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. uh -oh. I'm glad you got to that before he almost tore his rotated cup, pat himself Basically, on the back. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's funny. Stephon. Yeah, you got me checking my door. Every time I hear that, I'm checking the door. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan, last pick of the night, homie. All pick right. 16. This, this last pick, uh, very dear to me, because this is the last person from the country I represented, the Philippines. This is Arturo Tolentino, please. All right. So um, what's cool about Archie's shoe is... Um, it's, re it's inspired by where he's from. Um, there was a, a Filipino company that manufactured shoes primarily out of rubber back in like the 30s or something like that. Oh, so yeah. he's trying to bring like this modern spin um, to this new sort of a athletic yet sporty lifestyle shoe. Um, this boy's an architect, so if you see him sketch and how he thinks these things out, it's crazy. Everything is very considered. Um, I think any young designer could learn a lot if he ever posts a video. I don't know if he does, but he should help mm -hmm. others um, to help you. Archie, good job, man. Nice. Yeah. Let's do that head to head. Archie, Archie did send me a video, but it was eight minutes long. <laughs> ah. so he's like, dude, you can't send me an eight-minute video. Right. And, you know, not, not only that, like in his, in his other videos, you'll hear chickens in the background. <laughs> this, time, this time he didn't have printers running in the background. So I'm like, dude, oh. yeah. Get some music in the background or something. <laughs> Other sound effects. I like this. I like this. So we got Curtis Hoffman of the U.S. versus Arturo Tolentino, a.k.a. Archie the Chicken Man, as we know him. We love the Archie the way. Chicken Man. <laughs> <laughs> Philippines versus USA for the 15th and 16th pick of nice. the league for the World Sneaker Championships. Get a look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. And tough, 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 tough matchup. Tough. All of them. I mean, yeah. Talk about pitting some countries against each other. Some great soccer matches. Some great designs, and and especially the videos that people have submitted to to give that inspiration. The other side, the things that we can't necessarily see on a flat, you mm -hmm. know, one dimensional uh, design or just on a piece of paper. But yeah. the videos are really important. So people are gonna have to go over to WorldSneakerChampionship.com and. Get to voting as soon as uh, as this show ends this evening, boy. Woo! Wow. That was good. All right. Yeah. Vote at WorldSneakerChampionship.com. Please head on over there as soon as the broadcast is over and begin to vote. Um, selectors, we would like for you to have a final say before we end the broadcast on your picks and how you anticipate the outcome to be. So we go ladies first. Ladies first. So the ladies video. first. Um, as you could tell, I was a little nervous. I mean, describe. I wanted to give everything to these designers. I wanted to make sure that you you felt what I felt when I was looking at them. But you know, my words didn't come out too good. But um, I have to say that um, this week it's going to be very difficult picking the designs. I mean. When you go vote, make sure you're getting into it. Read the bios of the people and and listen. I looked up what um, vegetable tanned oil um and leather was. You know what I'm saying? Get down and deep into it before you make these decisions. Somebody's life could really be changed by this. So um, thank you to everybody, and I look forward to seeing next week or the next voting um, round. Thank you, Soldavina. Absolutely. Who's gonna take it next? Which selector is gonna take it next? 
Uh, I'll go. Uh, I just wanted to first good luck to all of the you know my selections. I'm being real selfish here. You know, <laughs> shout out to all my selections. You know what I'm saying I, I vouched for you guys, so I figured you know that I got to help keep continue to help people to vote for you guys. But for everyone that's in here, obviously you guys do an amazing job at, at designing sneakers. Uh, I could not do it. It's hard for me to just draw a circle. So the <laughs> fact that you guys were able to render out these shoes and they look as good as they do is way above what I could ever do. Um, and for those that are voting, you know, like Sol DeVita said, you know, really look up these guys, look at their videos, listen to what they have to say, um, because it's a lot deeper than just looking at the designs. Look at their thought, look at the way they thought about it, like the way they thought about the design, the way they drew it, the lines on the shoes, the outsoles, the uppers, the laces, how you would actually use the shoe, and vote, you know, vote that way. Don't actually just look at the design and go, oh, that's cool, and vote for that one. Really give these guys, because they put in a lot of work to create these shoes, so I would push that you do your research and vote for them. There you go, Jacques. Thank you. Thank you. Matthew. Yeah, I would agree with uh, everything just said before me. The other thing I want to add, too, is the importance of the skill set that we see here. It's not lost on me that the CEO of Nike started as a shoe designer, mm -hmm. uh, and he still sketches in meetings uh, from what I'm told. Uh, so the ability to see product and create something on a blank piece of paper, I mean, that's that's the that's the engine of the industry. Uh, and they're really talented people here. It did not surprise me to hear Dwayne said that three of them already have jobs. I expect more will get them. Uh, and those that don't advance, don't be discouraged. Uh, you got to be tenacious uh, to work in this business. And I applaud everyone for even having the courage to, to do this. I, I certainly wouldn't have when I was early in my career. So congrats. Yeah. My final selector. The, the 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 incumbent champion Don. <laughs> so Don, please impart some wisdom. Um, so you know, first of all, uh, thanks for having me back, everybody. Um, and for like all the students who didn't get in, um, this industry is really small. You know, so look what everyone's doing, see how they think, see how they work, watch the videos. I really encourage you because you're going to learn a lot from that. And, you know, a year, two years down the road, you're probably going to be working with a lot of these people that made it this far. The industry is super, super small, and I can't really emphasize that enough. You know, like, build your network, build your relationship. Um, also, you know, you guys, it's pretty crazy and also really humbling. You know, two years ago, I was, like, in these guys' spot, and now, you know, I have, like, tons of people hitting me up, you know, online. You are like, you know, hey, you know, I love your shoe. It's really great. Like, what advice could you give me? Like, how could I do better? And it's weird, you know, because I, I'm still feeling like I'm pretending to be a real-world adult. Um, but also trying to help these kids at the same time, you know. But uh, just keep working hard, and, you know, you'll eventually get what's yours if you put in the work. So thank you, guys. Well, well the competition is on the table. People are going to go vote. I echo everything that's been said before me. There's no more to say. Cast your vote, WarsneakerChampionship.com. I'm ready to wear a pair of these sneakers. I'll leave Very it at that. Much. I'm ready. I'm ready. So that's it. That's, there's no more to say. <laughs> Wayne Edwards. Man, you know, at the, at the end of the day, you know, Stefan, you, you hit it right on the head. You know, people, people just don't really understand how small this industry really is. And not only will, you know, I predict more kids will, you know, get employment, or opportunities for for to generate some revenue based off of their talent from this from this tournament. I bet you some people are going to be working together too. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, it's it's something that you know, Stefan, you know this. You know, every single class that we have, I tell them, I tell you guys the same thing. Said, There's two people in here that's going to work together. There's one person in here that's going to help somebody else get a job somewhere else. And it's it's it hasn't it hasn't failed me since you know since 2010 it's happened, mm -hmm. and I think this is just another opportunity for for us to just cast a bigger net globally, to just to try to inspire these kids to understand that you know they can do something that probably they they got teased they got teased doing you know sketching and playing with shoes and it's like yeah okay but yeah, look at me now you know where. You know, it's it's amazing how, you know, before we started the show, we talked about this is just sneakers. You know, here we are. Think about it. We, you know, we're in multiple different locations, and we're just talking about sneakers. And it's just amazing to think that just how far the culture has come and just how great this talent is that we've seen tonight. And, and every week it's going to get tougher. 
um, is definitely going to be tougher every week. And um, so I just want to close by honestly just, you know, first of all saying thank you to Foot Locker for believing in Pencil and believing in um, the World Sneaker Championship concept. Soul Collector for helping us as our media partner, really pushing pushing it out there and, and getting some eyeballs on it. And honestly, to, to each of you, again, for giving up a, a piece of your Easter Sunday um, to talk about, you know, this, this little thing called sneakers that, you know, people used to joke about, but now, you know, it ain't a joke. It right. ain't a joke no more. Yep. Um, so I, I do really appreciate you guys doing that. Um, because I know you guys got family and, and things to do, so I do appreciate you guys giving up your time. Um, and then to also to Herbert and Wachaya, they're in the background making things happen. I'm just, I'm just very appreciative for everyone who's, who's believed in me, quite honestly, to, to just to try to share the knowledge that I've gained over the, over the course of the 27 years I've been in this business. And I'm, I'm still loving it, and I'm still having fun, and... I, I just want to make sure everybody get a chance to do the things that I had a chance to do, especially, you know, whoever wins. You know, again, like I said in the first episode is, you know, that moment, I still remember that moment walking into Foot Locker back in 1989 to see something on the shelf that I designed. You can't pay for that moment. No. And somebody's going to get that moment. Um, and, and along with twenty thousand and sixteen dollars too, by the way. Twenty thousand. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so I, I commend you guys all for watching, and you know, hopefully, you know, those of you who didn't make it to the round of 16. This is only the beginning. Yeah. You, you've been seen by myself. You've been seen by thousands of other people. Yep. Your talent will not go ignored. For so real. thank you for for being a part of it. For real. For real. So you know, I was going to save this story for another round, but considering we believe that at times tomorrow is not promised, I'm going to say it now. And you guys have heard me share this experience before, um, Dwayne and Dee, but to our selectors and everyone who's watching and even to the final 16 and the other additional folks who made up the round of 64 who might be watching, the biggest joke imaginable that I tell people which is why I'm so happy and blessed to be where I am right now with the sneaker industry is I have been in the sneakers for 30 plus years. I was also in my early teen years a graffiti artist in New York City. I have painted cars, subway cars, handball courts, all kind of stuff. I have drawn all kind of things. And through that total existence, since my early teen years, I've always been into sneakers. Not once. And if someone would have, just encouraged me, just once, the one conversation to say, you know what, you should consider a career in sneaker design, my life would be much different. Very simply put. It's the biggest joke imaginable. And I consider this experience that I have here now with what we do with Pencil and social studies and OSD and Everything that we've experienced over the last, you know, eight or nine years since D and I have started OSD was I got a second chance to find a new way to express my passion for sneakers. So for this to be your vehicle and to be involved with this particular experience, which is the World Sneaker Championships, Penn Soul, whatever the vehicle is where there's someone who believes in your talent on a global scale and asks you to get involved, by all means, support the experience. Not just support your own ascendance to the highest level of success, support the entire experience. Vote for those who still remain in the final 16. Wow. Tell people about this competition. Tell people about this experience. Because just because you may not have advanced if you're not in the final 16, that doesn't mean you weren't an instrumental part in making this experience something that inspires people around the world to come after you. So those are my words of wisdom for everyone. I wish you good luck to those who are in the final 16. And as Dwayne said, somebody else, be it final 16, final 64, 32, whatever, you will be working in this industry if you stay the course. I'm looking forward to seeing whoever that is. I'm looking forward to my kids buying product from whoever that is. 
Nah, we should at least get a discount, man. Ah. Uh, <laughs> keep it 100. Let's keep it 100. We can take it, dude. Sure. Okay. So with that being said, WorldSneakerChampionship.com. Voting get begins as soon as this broadcast is over. All right. Thank you guys very much. Enjoy the rest of your Easter Sunday. Thanks, Enjoy guys. Next week. Take care. Head on over to WorldSneakerChampionship.com, baby. Are we still live? Is this the part where I start dancing? Right. <laughs> you don't have to see the robot. <laughs> the robot. Right.